All right, good evening. I'd like to call the Thursday, November the 5th, 2020, virtual regular meeting to order. And at this time, I'd like for you to bow for a moment of silence, please. Amen. Thank you. At this time, I would like uh, Mrs. Shimmy, if she would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Is she? I'm right here. Okay. All right. Ready? Okay. Feel free to stand or sit. I pledge of allegiance, allegiance. to the flag allegiance. of the United States, States of America and to the Republic, to the Republic for, which for which it stands. One nation, One nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, justice and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, I would ask uh, that Mrs. Shumate, would she, would you please read the mission statement? The mission of the Portsmouth Public School Division is to engage all students in learning that will foster academic excellence and responsible citizenship. Thank you very much. You're welcome. At this time, I will ask our clerk for attendance, please. Ms. Allen. Present. Ms. Atkinson. Is Ms. Atkinson here? Okay. Mr. Barnes. Here. Mrs. Hine. Present. Mr. Lamb. Present. Reverend Patillo. Present. Mrs. Shoemake. Present. Mrs. Williams. Present. Mr. Parent. Present. Eight members present, one member absent. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is consideration of the agenda for November the 5th. You have had a copy of this. Uh, what is the board's pleasure? For approval, Patillo. Moves for approval and who said it? Who seconded it? Ms. Williams seconded. Ms. Williams seconded. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Parent. This is Hines. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Miss uh, Miss Williams, I'm pulling up my document right now. Did mm -hmm. we change on the agenda what we discussed yesterday in committee? Uh, I thought that Dr. I'm, Brady I'm trying to get to it right now. Yes. I thought he said under discussion he would roll call vote. It's it's under um Yeah, it's on here. Uh, nine point three. Okay. Staff I levels. Thank you. I hadn't looked at it since yesterday. I wanted to make sure we were gonna be okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hearing no more discussion, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen. Yes. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mrs. Hine. Yes. Mr. Lamb. Mr. Lamb. You're muted. Yes. Reverend Patillo. Yes. Mrs. Shoemake. Yes. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Mr. Parent. Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the student, uh, uh, the school board student representative, uh, Mr. Miles Hunt. Mr. Hunt, it is all yours. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Parent, Vice Chairman Patillo, Dr. Bracey, and school board members. I want to urge each of our students to continue attending classes, completing assignments, and staying focused continue thriving and achieving the goals you set for yourself, both academically and personally. For those who have exams and other testing coming up, please use all of the tips, tutoring, and preparation provided by your teachers. Make sure to make decisions that would benefit you and your future as we travel throughout the rest of this year. Please be laser focused on your academic career, mental health, and social <laughs> well-being. And as always, students and community members can follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at PPS Student Rep to stay connected. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. The next item on the on the agenda is that the board will go in 
The board will go into closed meeting. I move that the board enter into a closed meeting under the provisions of section 2.2-3711 of the Code of Virginia for the following purpose. Consideration of various personnel matters, including the assignment, performance, and resignation of specific school employees as permitted under subsection 8.1. Okay, motion's been read. Do I have a second? Second, Hans. Hans seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Reverend Patillo? Yes. Mrs. Shoemake? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mr. Parent? Yes. Animal? At this time, we are in closed session. I move that each board member certify to the best of his or her knowledge only matters which are lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements and which were identified in the motion to go into closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered during the preceding closed meeting. We've heard the motion read. Do I have a second? Allen, I'll second. Ms. Allen, second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Atkinson, come. Yes. Atkinson? Yes. Okay. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Ms. Hines? Ms. Ms. Hines? I think she stepped away for a second. No, she's there. She just has to unmute. Yes, I'm sorry. I had my earphones plugged in and not in my ears. Oh, that's a <laughs> Sam. Yes. Brother Patillo. Yes. Mrs. Shoemake. Yes. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Mr. Parent. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. We're now in open session. The next item on the agenda is curriculum and instruction, the monthly report. Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn. Good evening, Chairman Parent, Vice Chairman Patillo, and members of the board. It's always a pleasure to bring you the report from the Office of Curriculum Instruction. And tonight, of course, you have your report in board docs. Right. But in addition to that, we have a special presentation uh, highlighting performance-based assessments. We have a group of fifth graders who are demonstrating to us that even though virtual learning is a challenge, uh, they can have huge success with it. These students tonight are highlighting uh, what, how they have used critical and creative thinking to demonstrate their higher order mastery of skills and to produce a product. So at this time, we will have that presentation.
That's cute. Congratulations to those students for wonderful products. And by the way, those instruments actually work. And it was really exciting to, uh, to see their faces as they completed those. So what a great uh, exercise and what a great way to uh, extend learning beyond the classroom and work virtually with these students. And that concludes our report tonight. Thank you. Welcome. Very good. Before I go to the next item, I want to welcome back Kathy O'Hara. Kathy is uh, take, <laughs> helping out while uh, Lauren is out. So Kathy, welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Parent and members of the school board. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Wynn. Did anybody have any questions for Dr. Wynn? I did read your report and um, it was very thorough and the cute unity day for bullying, that was good. So any questions for Dr. Wynn before we go on to the next item? All right, seeing none, we go to a presentation, employee groups, budget and salary requests for 21-22. I think we have one speaker. So Dean, I'm gonna throw it to you. Mr. Um, Mr. Mr. Parent. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Bracey. Yeah, we have the, um, the, the 5.2 that we added, the discussion the return to school update oh i i'm sorry because i was looking at that under 9.3 no that that's different okay right. i don't have that on my my agenda i printed it out earlier so it can't okay. be at, if she added it uh before I, that i don't have it i'm sorry okay that's fine i copied you on the email I didn't get a chance to. Okay, all right. What what right, was well, the? Let me, I'll, let me. I'll I'll segue right into it then. Go ahead. So what this is, we wanted to. Um, I don't think we can give enough information as we talk about our return to school update and right. about the the strategy, the mitigations that we have in place to get ready for our January fourth uh, return with our pre-K through third grade students. So with that, with that being in place, we thought it would be a good idea just to periodically share this information from, from the operations department. And Dr. Simmons will walk through the um, strategies that we have in place you know, so that we can, when we return to school with our, with our students and the staff, they'll know the, the pieces that we put in place to ensure their safety. So okay. with, with that, I'm gonna let Dr. Simmons lead off and then Dr. Wynn will follow. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Chair Parent, Vice Chair Patillo, uh, members of the board, Dr. Bracey. Uh, I come before you tonight to present the auxiliary services plan uh, for reopening. Uh, if you will recall, I came before the board in August to talk about um, plans uh, that we had. And so some of those plans have come uh, to fruition and we just wanna share with the board tonight what we have in place 
Um, so as we get ready for school reopening uh, under uh, the direction of Mr. Herb Robinson, who is the coordinator of building services, Mr. James Gelhoff, who's the coordinator of food services, and Mr. Kevin Privet, who is the coordinator of transportation services. Next slide. And so we've been able to, in auxiliary services, install uh, plexiglass uh, in all of our buildings. And so when I use the term buildings, buildings, schools, interchangeably, uh, we've got about 25 buildings that we are responsible for. And so we've installed plexiglass uh, as a safety measure uh, in all of our front offices and security stations. Uh, we've ordered 105 freestanding uh, sanitation stations. Many of you have been in our buildings particularly as we hosted the um, uh, event at Wilson High School as it relates to the school renaming. And so you've seen some of those materials. Uh, we're proud of those. We have them distributed in all of our buildings. Um, we have 30 remaining in the warehouse in case we run into situations where things uh, break or whatever. And so uh, we do have a process to refill them as well. And so we have all of that in place in all of our buildings. We've distributed signage in all of our buildings in the front doors. All of the signage in PPS is uniformed across the division. And whether that uh, is signage in the front door as it relates to masks should be worn. Uh, we have uh, decals on our floor that space out six feet apart. And so the operations team has gone to every building to uh, strategically place that signage according to CDC guidelines. We're in the process of ordering special signage for our elementary schools that's a little bit more student friendly at the elementary level. We expect them to come in any day. Uh, and so we'll be engaged in this process in our elementary schools as well. And so some of the floor signage we've done has been at the middle and high school level, but we'll be getting out to the elementary schools and pre-K uh, as soon as our new signage comes in uh, that's a little bit more elementary friendly. We have 25 electrostatic sprayers. We've had a lot of conversation about our electrostatic sprayers and we've ordered yeah. 25 more. So we'll have 50 um, as soon as our next 25 come in. Uh, our head custodians use the electrostatic sprayers on a daily basis uh, to mitigate uh, any uh, germs uh, that may be uh, in our buildings or in our classrooms. Right. These, become, these become very important, particularly after, as after as athletics uh, come back on board. And so we know we've got to do gymnasiums, we've got to do locker rooms, uh, you know, we've got a lot to get accomplished. Um, and so we're, we think we're prepared and ready and certainly uh, as the next 25 come in, um, Dr. Brace's leadership uh, has been instrumental along with the, um, our, our leadership team as well as working with Mr. Falk. And so we're in constant communication with Mr. Falk almost every day in terms of funding and what we need in order to get these um, supplies ordered. And so general cleaning and sanitation cleaning occurs every day. And so if you go in our buildings, our custodians know and understand uh, the general cleaning must continue. But of course you should see wiping down of hard surfaces uh, as well. And so um, Mr. Robinson does an excellent job at uh, moving throughout the district to make sure uh, that we uh, observing all of those protocols as it relates to CDC guidelines. Uh, we have an abundance of personal uh, protective equipment in the warehouse. I think I shared in a committee meeting uh, at Clark, we've had to uh, move some things around and provide some additional space. And so our warehouse is now uh, almost um, saturated with PPE. Uh, Good. I get at the director's level an update uh, every day, uh, real time. And so I can just share a few things with you as it relates to inventory. Uh, we've got about 55,000 uh, adult masks uh, on hand right now uh, in the warehouse. Uh, and we also have about 12 to 13,000 student masks in the warehouse. And so we had to have a special order for student masks because as you are aware of, we're talking about pre-K, to probably second or third grade, they have to have specially ordered masks. And so we have those uh, in the warehouse, again, working with Mr. Falk uh, every day. Uh, I will be honest right now, uh, what we're finding out is because cases are going up throughout the country, some vendors don't have uh, and can't supply right now. Now we're lucky that we started early and so we're okay now, but just be aware as we get 
get to January. And as we start distributing, we, we have to make sure that we have a steady stream and can be able to um, replace or replenish the supply that we have now. And so uh, we get this on a daily basis. Um, the guys uh, do an excellent job at making sure that we know on a daily basis uh, what we have. And so we've distributed uh, at Dr. Brace's leadership, working with the principals. One round of PPE has gone out to every building. The principals actually sign for that uh, round to be delivered. And we've distributed a second round because we had some kindergarten testing. And so we distributed a second round to all of the elementary schools. Uh, we were so careful as to talk about how we would wipe down even the testing materials, uh, pencils, all of that, so that uh, we would make sure that even uh, at our kindergartens as they came in to test that everything would be safe and that we followed all of the guidelines. And so uh, next slide. And so this is just a continuation. Um, we've developed a social distancing plan. Uh, we've gone in every classroom in the uh, division. And so in every classroom, we know exactly uh, how far apart we've got to space uh, desks and whether we uh, go on a six feet plan or a three feet plan in terms of distance apart. It will be critical once we return that uh, our students and staff follow uh, and keep our students socially distanced. And so we know uh, from auxiliary services, we have that data on hand. I'll be sharing that uh, with the team on tomorrow uh, in an Excel uh, format, but we're proud of the fact that we know every um, classroom in every building in our division in terms of what that should look like uh, as we get ready to return. And so, uh, we, we, uh, that information will be critical as we uh, plan to return. Uh, we've ordered eight additional uh, large uh, electrostatic sprayers. And so these are not the handhelds. These are the large ones that can cover much more era, era, uh, area. Uh, they actually plug into the wall socket and so they don't run by lithi lithium battery. We use these as a backup because we know the more we use the ones with lithium battery, and that was the reason for ordering 25 more. Uh, we want to be we want to be prepared so that we have eight. These eight are actually in the warehouse. We have them in stock. Um, we are proud of the fact that we have our own PPS deep disinfectant team. Uh, that team um, is spread out throughout the division. They deep clean and sanitize eight of our buildings. Uh, per night. So I know eight buildings were disinfected tonight. Uh, we'll have eight more tomorrow night. I don't have the schedule right here in front of me, but I think uh, our principals, Dr. Bracey, everybody knows kind of that schedule now. We've gotten accustomed to that schedule. Uh, they take this very seriously when they come in, in terms of they've been highly trained, well-skilled. Uh, we leave the uh, notes on every door uh, for example, I know clock was done this afternoon. So when I walk in tomorrow, I know that sign will be in my office that this uh, area has been deep cleaned and disinfected and clean. And I think that's a plus for PPS that we have that extra layer of support. Uh, this team is led by Mr. Malik Wilson and they do an outstanding job. Uh, we had to order some special um, suits for, for this team because they have to protect themselves as well. And so if you've seen them working, they might have on their white uh, suits or booties in terms of how they are instructed to take off their disposable protective equipment as well. And so we're, we're very proud. Ms. Duran Human Resources helped us uh, pull and get this together. And so we're proud of the fact that we've got our own team and they are uh, adding that extra layer of protection um, on the schedule uh, of our buildings throughout the entire building where there have been uh, interactions during a particular day. And so we put together a pandemic committee early. We started this concept back in March. And so this committee continues to meet. Uh, we have Dr. Kamardi serves on it with us, uh, Mr. Falk, several principals. And so we get the perspective throughout the district of people who can provide insight and input as to what we should be doing uh, in auxiliary services. Next slide. So food services, uh, as we move into uh, coming back, um, all of our pre-Ks and elementaries will begin to serve breakfast on site. Uh, as we are aware right now, 
Uh, we have buses out in the community. I think we've got 12. Uh, as we return, we may not be able to keep the buses out. And I say may, it just depends on the number of parents who request bus transportation. And so we will be able to serve on site at all of the pre-K and elementary. For those students who remain hybrid, we will still have our high schools open where those uh, individuals can still go to those sites and pick up meals. Um, the directing supervisors next week are going to actually visit a neighboring uh, division where students are already in. It's always good to see kind of what other people are doing. And so how can we use some strategies in terms of what they're doing uh, to help us uh, when our students return on a hybrid uh, model as well. Uh, and so we want to make sure that students receive meals, both those who are in the hybrid, those who remain virtual. And so we've got a good plan, we think, put together to make sure that we don't want any of our students not to be able to receive a nutritious meal uh, as it relates to food and nutrition. Um, next slide. Oh, let me just go back to kiosk. Uh, we've ordered kiosk as a, as a, as a strategy. And so this is a strategy for when students come back. And so instead of students going to the cafeteria, if we can mitigate the movement as it relates to CDC guidelines, the kiosks will be set up, uh, meals will still be hot. And so we're planning to basically take the meal to the student instead of the students have to travel to the classroom. There's, they, they, there may be some traveling to the cafeteria, but we have a strategy in place and those kiosks have already been ordered. And so- They're good, so. that's great. That's neat. Thank you. Next slide. Yeah. And so as it relates to transportation, uh, just to be aware, uh, I'll just put some numbers up so that people will be aware. We have 132 buses. We've got 1077 passenger buses. And according to the guidelines, we can only get about 22 students on those buses. We have to use a zigzag pattern. And so only one student per seat unless the students are coming out of the same household. Uh, and so we want to make sure we've got a trial run with this already. As you know, we've been transporting uh, our special uh, education students. And so we've not run into any issues with uh, our special ed students. It takes about 20 buses to transport the 55 or 60 special education students that we're transporting currently. And so with this ratio, depending on how many students or parents elect to come back in person, we anticipate having to use uh, most of our buses uh, in order to uh, do our transportation runs as it relates to a uh, hybrid model. And so um, bus drivers and monitors are always expected to wear face coverings. Uh, if you've been to any of our buildings, we have specially ordered um, social distance signs that stick to the cement. And so the bus has to pull up in the bus loop. It can only unload uh, one bus at a time, whereas the old model, all the buses could pull up and we could probably just open doors and release them. So we've got to do that one bus at a time with the students remaining socially distanced to either load and unload. And so we've got, again, some practice with this uh, as we've been doing it with special needs uh, students for quite some time now. And so we think we're well prepared and positioned uh, when and if we do come back uh, in a hybrid model. Um, next slide. That's good. And so we've got to disinfect as well with buses. We cannot uh, run two runs in a row. And so once the first run has been run, the driver has to stop. Bus has to be disinfected, wiped down completely, seats, rails, everything before the next group can be picked up. This will add some time to uh, our routing. And so we're prepared for that as well. Um, and so we're following again, all the CDC guidelines as it relates to transportation. Uh, we do have some buses that'll be used as hotspots as well. And then if you look at the bottom uh, bullet yeah. we have ordered with transportation funds, we've got six electrostatic sprayers where we can spray buses as well in terms of- uh, At the same as time. As we're doing in the, in the schools as well. And so uh, we're planning to have a group put together to uh, disinfect on the schedule, the buses, just as we're doing buildings. And so we're trying to make sure as we meet as a group, we don't leave any stones unturned as it relates to safety um, and security and, uh, you know, well-being of uh, both the adults who own the bus and our students who uh, may have to ride as well. 
Next slide. So these are just a few updates. Uh, we work closely with Dr. Lauren James as, as she's been um, and made several presentations to the board. Uh, we work with her closely as well. Uh, work closely with Dr. Bracey in constant communication uh, with the leadership and um, with our staff in terms of doing everything that we know uh, with the guidelines that we've been given and the funding and following uh, all of the guidelines as it relates to procurement and everything that we have in the warehouse as it relates to keeping all of our stakeholders safe. And that includes um, administrators, teachers, uh, students, um, you know, visitors, all of our stakeholders. Um, and so we take it very seriously and, um, you know, we're doing uh, all that we know how as it relates to uh, both in the period that we've been in now and in anticipation of a hybrid model. And so uh, we're in the buildings almost every day. And so we follow the same guidelines, wearing masks, staying apart from each other, uh, doing what we need to do in operations. And so uh, as a director, I feel very comfortable in what we've been able to do. And so uh, we just wanted to share that with you tonight. I think the last time I just ask for questions if anyone has any questions. I just wanted to compliment you and your staff because uh, this is very comprehensive. And I mean, I, as a board member, I feel very, um, <coughs> I feel very uh, safe that knowing that uh, y'all, the, the amount of PPP, PPEs that we have and um, those electric stat, electric stat or electrostatic machines that we have, those are very good and they will that'll speed up the, the process. So y'all have done a very good job and I compliment you and your staff for doing that. Thank you. Board members, do you have any other questions? If not, Dr. Dr. Bracey? Wynn, yeah, Dr. Wynn is Dr. Wynn has a piece to um, add to that as well. I'll All right, Dr. Wynn. I'll try to be brief. Um, Dr. Simmons has shared with you the safety protocols. And as we all know, safety supersedes everything for our students. But we also have some instructional things that we'd like to just highlight. Uh, we know that when we move to the hybrid model, things will look a little different for those students who come in person. In preparation for that, we will be uh, asking parents to complete a survey uh, to, uh, to let us know whether or not they will allow their child to come for the hybrid or if they want them to remain 100% virtual. Uh, much of what we do will be driven by those requests for in-person versus virtual learning. We are in the process of developing those schedules, but I did want to share just a few things with parents around what it would look like um, when students are in the hybrid program, they will report to school in person two days a week. They will either be on a Monday, Tuesday schedule or Thursday, Friday schedule. And our Wednesdays, of course, will remain what we call our flipped Wednesday, which is our independent learning day. Um, when students report to school, as Dr. Dr. Simmons shared, they will have breakfast, they'll have their morning meeting, teachers will take attendance, and then they will have core content as well as encore instruction uh, which will include art, music, and physical education. They'll have recess, they'll have social emotional learning, um, but they will be asked to wear a mask and they will be asked to socially distance and their activities will be limited. We would, uh, because we want to limit movement as much as possible. So teachers will move from class to class uh, instead of students moving from class to class. Um, we also want to share that if parents elect for students to become 100% virtual, they will remain 100% virtual for the rest of the entire school year, as will those students who are hybrid. Uh, a hybrid stu student uh, will remain the same unless there's an extenuating circumstance. Um, I also want to note that I have been in contact with Alphabest, who is our current vendor for providing before and after school care. And we're in the process of uh, making plans for before and after school care on a limited basis because we will be socially distancing there as well and space will be available according to the amount of space that we have open to them in our schools. Right. So I would ask that parents and teachers uh, be on the lookout for the upcoming survey and that they will provide uh, as much inf information as they can as soon as possible to help us as we um, continue to find ways to um, provide instruction and safety and 
make sure that we can bring our students back for a healthy and positive experience. Any okay. Questions? Any questions? Dr. Bracey, any, any final uh, comments you'd like to make? No, just that was just the a piece that we wanted to share. And I'm sure once we get back into school, we will share some similar updates as this, just to let everyone know how everything is going. So that's it. That concludes this section. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, moving on now. Uh, I see Dean moving around. Uh, the next item is employee group budget and salary request. And I think we have a speaker. Or uh, yes, Ms. Chambers, we have we have one speaker. Yes, we certainly do. Okay. All right. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Perfect. I'll go ahead and uh, we've got our speaker right here. All right. Mr. Jones. Good evening. Chairman Parent, Vice Chairman Patello, Dr. Bracey, members of the school board, good evening. My name is Gordon Jones, and I represent the Portsmouth Education Association. I believe you have a copy of our presentation um, in front of you. Yeah. First of all, on behalf of the 560 plus members of the Education Association, we would like to thank you for including us in the discussion for the upcoming 2021-2022 school year budget. First of all, we wanna thank you for allowing all school personnel to continue to receive their pay from the beginning of this pandemic. We applaud you for standing against furloughing. We know that you are aware that school employees are considered essential personnel in this pandemic era, along with medical and emergency personnel. Many teachers are spending countless hours on computers, inputting lesson plans and making sure online platforms are working properly for our children. This includes spending their personal time on the weekends as well. Now that we're working from home, things are, we are dealing with the increases in our home expenses. Groceries, electric, internet purchasing and upgrades, taxes, and heating and cooling bills have gone up. Even our health care has gone up recently. Portsmouth school employees have not seen an increase in step-based pay in quite a few years nor have we seen a cost of living increase as well, yet the cost of everything has gone up. So are you asking yourself, is there a solution? Yes, there is. We are recommending a 3% pay increase for all employees. We feel that this is only fair and equitable to meet the absence of cost of living and step increases, as well as increases in insurance premiums. We are also recommending an educational incentive program that includes grants and or scholarships for paraprofessionals, educational support personnel. Many of our paraprofessionals or ESPs are currently performing an extraordinary, as extraordinary educators alongside their classroom teachers. This would inspire them to purchase further, pursue, excuse me, further their educational goals, as well as assist in developing a recruitment and employment pipeline among the existing staff. Finally, we recommend that there be a discussion concerning a new 21st century elementary middle school building with all the technolog technological accommodations and Given the current trends towards technology as a career, such as cybersecurity, our students would also benefit from an opportunity to attend a new 21st century technology and career center and a dual program with Tidewater Community College. 
Our students and staff, thank you for this opportunity to share our concerns and recommendations with you. We look forward to seeing the implementation of these ideas and more in order to more make Portsmouth Public Schools the ideal place for teaching and learning. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you, along with me, um, this is Barbita Terry, who is the Vice President of Portsmouth Education Association, and Dr. Tony McNair, who, are, who is the UNICEF Director for our area. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you all tonight. We hope you all consider these when going towards the um, considering your budget. We appreciate your time. And my name is Barbita Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings to everyone. It is good to be here with you tonight. And of course, I support um, Mr. Jones and Ms. Terry and the educators here in Portsmouth as uh, we hope to have um, these recommendations strongly considered for the upcoming budget school year. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, before you leave, I wanted to ask Dr. Bracey. Dr. Bracey, were we the only school division to give our teachers a, a, a any kind of raise for this year? I noticed that, that in some school divisions, they didn't give their teachers anything. And I think Virginia Beach is going to give their teachers a, a $1,000 I mean, give, give their whole, all the staff a thousand dollars. When Mr. Jones were talking about the two percent up and recommending three percent, didn't we? Didn't we give all of our staff a two percent raise? Yes, we yes. did. And uh, I think, and Mr. Falk can correct me, but I believe that we probably were, if not the only one, one of the few that did the two percent. We had a discussion. Um, a couple of days ago with the region two superintendents. I know a lot of them now while we're talking about doing some type of bonus, but I shared right. with you that we did it. We actually did a 2%. Um, right. I didn't know if we would be considering anything else being that we were able to satisfy that in our budget to the. No, I just wanted Mr. Jones. Uh, and this is a, your presentation was excellent. I love these, your, your PowerPoint and your slides. Thank you very much. But Thank I wanted you. you to know the PEA to know that Portsmouth was the only, I think the only uh, uh, Hampton Roads uh, school division that were that was able to give a at least a raise and we gave a two percent others were giving now are considering bonuses which you know that really doesn't help you with your vrs uh, that two percent does so but thank you very much for your presentation and um, we're going to do our very best uh, to look at all of the issues that will come before us as we develop our budget so thank you very much for coming tonight oh again thank you sir appreciate it Yes, sir. Madam Clerk, do we have any other speakers? No, sir. All right, thank you. The next item on the agenda is the uh, minutes, and this is roll call consideration of the minutes for October the 8th, 2020, October the 22nd, 2020. What is the board's pleasure? Do I have a motion? Second. <laughs> Schumit, Schumit made the motion and Hines seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing, no, hearing, hearing no discussion. Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen. Yes. Ms. Atkinson. Yes. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mrs. Hines. Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mrs. Shoemate? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mr. Parent? Yes. Minutes approved. Thank you. Next item, uh, do, uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers for non agenda items? No, sir. And do we have any speakers for board agenda items? Yes, sir. Thank you. The next Chairman item, on Chairman Parent. Yes. I, I, um, 
I'm figuring this might be a good time to bring it up just because it's under this title, non-agenda items and so forth. But I do have a, a parent that's asked me about um, students returning back to, to school. Yes. Um, will they have the same teacher, I guess, um, when they come back to school? And how are they going to divide classes are they going to keep same family members on same days or on different for the K through three? I, Dr. Bracey, Dr. Wynn, I. We are asking, uh, we are asking uh, principals to schedule uh, children from the same families on the same day. Okay. Uh, so that parents will have that. And even uh, we're even doing that K through 12. We're trying to make sure that we do that on the same day when everybody comes back. Um, as far as teacher assignments, much of that will depend upon staffing. And so I don't want to commit to that because we don't know what staffing will look like for in-person ver hybrid versus virtual, uh, because some of our teachers will, te will be teaching 100% virtual. We'll have a better feeling for that once we get the staffing survey and the parent survey, because we don't know how many students will be returning for the hybrid as well. Okay. Um so, so it is definitely though, with regards to the same family though, that's gonna take a high priority over everything. Absolutely. Okay. We will schedule same families on the same, uh, children from the same family on the same day. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. All right, moving on is the monthly report. Um, Mrs. Durham, your human resources report. Mrs. Durham, where yes. did she go? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, there you are. Yes, okay. ma'am. All right, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Um, you have received the human resources report and yes. it, it does give you information about um, our current vacancies, which we are still trying to fill with December graduates. We have a fair that is scheduled uh, for November the 17th for instructional staff, as well as a fair scheduled for November the 12th for auxiliary services. And that concludes my human resources report. Okay, the next item is consideration of the employee transaction report. Uh, you have had an opportunity to review it. What is the board's pleasure? Move for approval, Hines. Hines. Second, Atkinson. Atkinson, all right. Do we have any discussion? Hear no discussion. Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Atkinson? Yes. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mrs. Shoemake? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mr. Parent? Yes. Mr. Thank you. The next item uh, is uh, has changed from a discussion to roll call vote concerning staffing levels. And I think the motion is that we're going to, uh, the motion is that we we're going to be voting on returning all staff uh, to their schools on November 23rd, 2020 for a four day week. Do I have a motion for approval? Move for approval, Hines. Second, Williams. All right, any discussion? Here, no discussion. Madam Clerk, this will be roll call vote. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Atkinson? I'm abstain. I'm going to abstain because I missed a portion, Chairman Parent, of the okay. discussion and closed session. So I just oh. wanted to um, communi that, communicate Thank that to the board. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Arn? No. Mrs. Hine? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mrs. Shoemake? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mr. Parent? Yes. Six yes, one no, one abstention, it passes. Very good, thank you. Moving on is budget and planning, and this is roll call vote. Consideration to approve FY 2019-20 purchase orders beyond 120 days, and you have that in your packet. Uh, Mr. Falk. I 
I think unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. I tell you yeah. what, that mute button always gets you. That I mute. know. I know. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good evening, right, Chairman go Parent, uh, Reverend Patillo, uh, members of the board, Dr. Bracey. You have an item in your packet tonight um, to approve um, certain 2019-20 purchase orders be beyond the 120-day limit that is within our uh, school board policy. Correct. Uh, the, the total of those POs is $323,701. The majority of them, $319,335, are related to computer-related um, um, purchases that we have that obviously because of the nationwide shortage on computer related Chromebooks and things of that nature, um, we were not able to get within that 20 days. We have assurances from the vendor that they will be here soon, but not within that 20, 120 day period that we have in our board um, policy. So we're asking for you to uh, approve that we hold those open longer than 120 days to get those in the majority of those um, items are student uh, Chromebooks. Okay. Do I have a, do I have a motion to appro to approve? Move for approval, Hines. Hines. Do I have second. a second? Second, Williams. Okay. Any discussion? The only thing I, I would like to bring up is that um, we've been down this road before with this particular with this particular item because um, there have been some city council members that have not um, recognized our 120 day. Um, and that has been very difficult for us as a board. Um, but I hope that when this does go, this doesn't have to go to city council, no. But we've no. had in the past, uh, yeah, we've had in the past that city council members have um, no, well, I won't go into it, but anyway, I hope I hope there's not I hope there's not any issues dealing with this because it's our policy and um, and it's uh, that's it. So, all right, it, it's a new day. It's a new it's day. a new day. That don't, is correct. Don't even worry about it. All right. Uh, hearing no more discussion, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen. Yes. Ms. Atkinson? Yes. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mrs. Hahn? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Yes. Mrs. Schmidt? Yes. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Mr. Pan? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the monthly report of the superintendent, Dr. Bracey. Thank you, Chairman Parent, and Vice Chair Patillo, members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to share this information. First, I wanna thank the school board for affirming our recommended dates for employees return to work and students in our phased in return to school. To clarify the board's decision on these subjects for the viewing public, let me capsulize the decisions. First, the date we've set for return to the physical work Monday, December 23rd. Tomorrow we'll be, we will be distributing a survey to all employees asking them to respond as to their individual intent regarding our request that they return to work physically. The survey will point out how to, how to access the, uh, assess the options such as leave and ADA accommodations for those who feel they cannot do, this, do what the school system is requesting. The goal of this summary is to ascertain what our staffing levels are likely to be so that we can address any changes that may occur. We anticipate the survey will close on Friday, November 13th, and we'll report back to the school board on our likely staffing scenario in the future. The second issue, the phased reopening of schools will happen in the new year. Monday, January 4th, we will have our pre-K through grades three students report. Tuesday, January 19th is set aside for grades four through six. And Tuesday, February 2nd, which begins the second nine weeks, we will be looking at the middle and high school students coming back to school. I say come back, but as you know, return predicated on the parents and guardians making that choice. Tomorrow, we plan to launch a survey to elementary parents. The survey will require parents and guardians to make a choice between the two alternatives. 
One is the hybrid model that will involve students reporting to schools two days a week and learning virtually for three days. The second alternative is a virtual model that involves students getting 100 percent of their virtual of their instruction online. The, that survey is anticipated to close also on November 13th. So both surveys will run from tomorrow to next Friday. In the coming weeks, we will issue a second similar survey to the parents and guardians of our secondary students. Please note that we'll be enlisting the assistance of principals in ensuring that all staff members and parents participate in these very important surveys. On another subject, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the school board for its support of our request to city council that the council approve the reappropriation of almost $2.9 million back to our PPS risk management fund. Hey, praise the Lord for that. I also I would like to thank acting city manager LaVars Pace for ensuring this request was made and it made it to the city council agenda. City council was gracious in the fact that the request was approved unanimously. I also want to thank our CFO, Mr. Theodore Falk and his staff for their work on preparing the reappropriation request and the supplement of the supplementing documents that were needed. In fact, I have some more good financial news to share with you. The Government Finance Officers Association of the United States, known as GOFA, has awarded the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting to the City of Portsmouth School Board for its comprehensive annual financial report, the CAFR, for the fiscal year that ended January, June 30, 2019. Notably, our CAFR was judged by an impartial panel to meet the high standards of the program, which includes demonstrating a constructive spirit of full disclosure to clearly communicate its financial story and motivate potential users and user groups to read the CAFR. Congratulations to Mr. Falk and his staff for preparing such a fine document and congratulations to the school board for your commitment to transparency in local government. The next piece I wanna share and hopefully you all- Dr. Bracey, before you do that, can we give, can we give uh, Mr. Falk and his staff a, a round of applause? He definitely, Mr. Falk, thank you so much. I know how hard your staff works. That's not, that's not easy. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. It's a team effort uh, between my staff and, and the entire school division that provides documentation for us. Uh, we appreciate all your help so that we can do what we do to obtain awards like that. So thank well, you. Well, it's a great honor for our school division, and it's a great honor for our city. So thank you again. All right, Dr. Brace, I'm sorry. Just needed to acknowledge that. No, sir. Not a problem. The last thing I want to do is to share the uh, certificate that we received from the United Way. Hopefully you can see this. That we, oh yeah. We donated $33,933 um, last year during our campaign. So as you know, we're um, wrapping up, or have we wrapped up, Mrs. Doran, the, the, our current United Way. Still wrapping, sir. We're still wrapping still up. Still wrapping. Yes, <laughs> I just wanted to share this with everyone and thank our staff and our community for their support in this endeavor. Uh, Chairman Tarrant, that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, before we go to board members' comment, I wanted to uh, to let the board know that since our teachers will be returning on November 23rd, um, we have, Dr. Bracey and I talked about this uh, this afternoon. It's only fitting that we as a board um, have our December 3rd and our December 10th in-person meeting. Uh, so we will be meeting, I think Dr. Bracey at John Tyler Elementary on December the 3rd and December the 10th. Unfortunately, we cannot have, you know, annually, we always have our children sing. So, but this year we will not be having our children sing uh, this year, but we will be meeting in person. We will be six feet apart and we'll be wearing masks. And like our April meeting, that was the last meeting that we, I think, yeah, we were at Brighton. You'll have plenty of, of uh, sanitizer and, They'll spray the building before we get in and spray it after we leave. So um, I look forward to seeing all of you in person December the 3rd and then the next week, December the 10th. The other thing is that um, 
I think most of you have uh, registered for the virtual VSBA meeting, and I look forward to uh, hearing those uh, those presentations. And uh, we're very close to uh, meeting all the standards to be a board of distinction, which has been one of my goals since uh, I became chair, and to make sure that uh, we make sure that we we become a board of distinction because I think that we have done a great job and uh, hopefully we will get there. So do I have any other comments from board members? Yes. Mr. Barnes, yes, sir. With, uh, with all the um, hard work that our staff has put in over the last couple of months, given the COVID situation, is there, uh, is it possible that we can find some funds to give our staff some bonuses? I'll have to defer that to Mr. Falk and Dr. Bracey because they would have to, Dr. Bracey, Dr. Mr. Falk. Well, that's that's something, Mr. Parent, that, that hasn't been budgeted for because it wasn't anything that we had um, discussed, but we can take a look to see if that's a possibility based on where the revenue um, and expenditures are falling. So I can- Okay. Um, and let you all know. Matter of fact, we have a um, finance committee coming up. Um, is it next week, Mr. Falk? So we we can discuss that. Yeah. At, um, give us time to do a little research and follow up with you. Okay. Any other questions from any board members? Any comments? Mr. Parent, it's Ms. Hines. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, I just want to say that the committee, the uh, curriculum and instruction committee met um, this past week um, and you guys have heard the report from Dr. Wynn and Dr. Bracey tonight as far as staffing is concerned. So yes, uh, just to let everybody know that, that we met and you guys have heard, you guys right. heard, we heard. <laughs> we heard, and we heard and we approved. Yes. All right, do I have any other, any other comments from any board members? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a question. Adjourn. Oh, wait a minute, somebody has a question. I do. What oh. did you say about the December 10th meeting? Is that Where is that being held? John what Tyler, the G December so 3rd. John Tyler. Both are gonna be at Don John Tyler. Cause they already set up for the third. We don't wanna to go to another school and make them set up again. So we're, both meetings will be at John Tyler Elementary. Okay, thank you. Mr. Okay. Is the, yes, is, the public, is, is the public invited to that meeting as well? Since it's, I mean, it's our first one back. Are we making? It would have to be. It would have to be, and they would have to be limited to. We're still limited to to two hundred and fifty people, right, Doctor Bracy? Yes, sir. We're in phase. We're still in phase three, and having a a medical metrics of four point two. Boy, that's that's great. I mean, we're we're under way under the five point, which is great. So, all right, any other questions? Have Motion we, to approve, ma'am? Yes, one more. Have we made any headway with the liaison meeting? Well, Dr. Bracey and I, of course, he talked with the, uh, the interim city manager and because of the, uh, it was appropriate, the, the money was appropriated uh, and that was, that kind of resolved itself. And given that we've just had an election and that uh, December is going to be um, a, a month that's going to be very different for both the city council and the school board. We felt that it's best that now that we have a new mayor, uh, Mayor Shannon Glo Glover, he will appoint his two liaisons and then at the, our, our reorganization meeting, then the, the, the chair that that is going to be elected will appoint uh, at, to liaison. So uh, remember in February, we have the joint meeting of both the school board and the city council. So hopefully uh, once everybody is sworn in and we have all our board members and then the city council members, we might, we'll be able to reach out and schedule a liaison meeting before the, uh, the joint meeting, Ms. Hines. That's, that was the plan. Okay. And I okay. think I do have one more question. I'm sorry. Sure. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, teacher laptops. I know that we've been in discussion about receiving teachers receiving new laptops. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about schedules. 
um, for yeah. to pick up and, and, and all that jazz. So I'm just, I want to make sure that that schedule and that teachers have been able to pick up their, their new goods, uh, Dean, um, as we move forward with this. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So um, I believe we have two schools left. Um, so we've, we've, we've made it through the schools and um, of course there's some folks that couldn't make it. Um, so we're, we're scheduling those individually, so. I just wanna say thank you. I know that your IT department between you and Jennifer, um, y'all are just rocking and rolling and I appreciate you guys being there for the teachers um, and all of my teachers that, that talk have, have had nothing but good to say about what IT and what about their ITRTs are doing. So I just wanted to give you, I'm gonna give you a virtual high five, Dean, cause you know, we can do it in December, right? Um, but just give you a high five. So thank you very much. All right, thank and you. And I think all of you received uh, Ms. O'Hare's um, email, uh, given that we, we were, not, I mean, given the IT department has made sure that uh, we, we had no shutdown and uh, there's a story I think that's going to be in the paper. Uh, Kathy, did you say tomorrow? Is it going to be in tomorrow's paper? Uh, you got actually, gotta... actually um, uh, Chairman Parent, it is online now. Oh, it's online now. So Portsmouth looks good. We didn't have to close schools and kids because of our great IT department uh, making sure that. Um, our servers were, didn't go down and that we were able to continue our business. So that's great. All right. Any more questions? All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn now? I made the motion. Oh, you made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. And there's a second. Any discussion? Hear no discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Have you heard all that? Now, I will see you on December 3rd, and I will see you again on December the 10th.